A lot has changed about Animal Crossing since November last year. So I thought I'd do a new ultimate guide to Animal Crossing in 2022. But before we get going, you might be thinking, who is this person? And are they even qualified to give me tips and tricks about Animal Crossing? So please perceive my Animal Crossing CV. I have more than 1,500 hours in Animal Crossing. And you might be thinking, that's not that much. But when you take into account all the time I am not playing Animal Crossing, I am making content about Animal Crossing. And if I'm not making content about Animal Crossing, I am watching someone's Animal Crossing content. Let's not dig too deep into what this means for my actual life, but... And in a few weeks, I'm going to be a doctor. It'll be in chemistry, but for this intensive purposes, let's pretend it's in Animal Crossing, okay? Moving on. All right, let's start with the very, very beginning, which is owning the game. Unfortunately, you can only have one island per Switch, no matter how many users use the Switch. Yep, I know, that kind of sucks. Once you get past the very beginning of the game, gameplay for all players is almost identical. Every player on the Switch will have their own house, which they can decorate. Every player can also contribute to the museum and visit Mystery Islands. Each player is also able to decorate the island. There's also a couch co-op mode, so you can do it together. So if you're sharing the Switch, it might be a good idea to kind of sit down and decide a general island theme and which villagers you want versus which villagers you 100% don't want. Otherwise, you're going to have arguments. Unfortunately, if you want a new island, you're going to have to buy a whole new Switch. Yeah. Who would do that, eh? If you do buy a second Switch, you only need one copy of the game, though. It can be digital or physical, and the DLC can be used on both, so long as you link your Nintendo accounts, which is pretty cool. Next up is the very beginning of the game, which is picking your island. If you don't like the four initial islands that the game gives you, just exit out the game, load back up, and you'll get another four sets of islands presented to you. There's a ton of different layouts, so you can just do this as much as you want till you find the perfect island. When you pick an island, there are a few things you want to look out for. This is the resident services location, the airport location, the pier location, and the river mouths. Once you've picked your island, none of these can be moved. Everything else in the game can be changed and moved around apart from these things. So really take a good look and decide if this is where you want them. My big tip when picking an island is to get as big a distance as possible from your airport to resident services. This way, further down the line, when you decide to decorate your island, you can do whatever you want without being limited by the small distance between them. Once you've picked your island, you'll find out who your first two starting villagers are, and you'll find out what your fruit is, your native flower, and your airport color. We're going to go through them in a sec. Now, if you get a villager that you simply cannot stand, you can restart your island. The same goes for the fruit and the flowers, but all of those can be changed later. The only thing that cannot be changed is your airport color. And this is where things change in 2.0. Previously, your airport color determined the color of all the items available in your Nook terminal. And previously, the only way you could get different colored items were to get them from your friends. But this isn't the case anymore. The game has a new feature, which means that you can get every single color of all the items without having Nintendo online or visiting friends. So that isn't really a worry. So the only reason why you'd have to pick an airport color is if you really hate the other colors. Other than that, you're good to go. At the beginning of the game, you really don't need to worry about where you place anything. You can place things on the sand if you really don't want them to get in the way with future decorating but every single building in the game can be moved later on. In fact, the 2.0 update made it cheaper to do so as well. So just place them where you want. The only thing that you do at the beginning of the game that you cannot change is your island name. My top tip would be to pick an island name that has no theme. This way, further down the line, when you decide to change up your island, you won't be limited by your island name only suiting that theme. Both your villager name and your island name can only be changed if you restart your island, which really sucks. If you're watching this video, you're likely already a couple of days into the game, so you probably already upgraded your tent to a house. However, if you're having trouble getting Nook Miles, I have a video right here which will tell you how to do that quickly. The first thing you probably got a bit stuck on was getting enough iron nuggets to build the shop. <sighs> every time that gets me. You can get up to eight drops from every rock by doing the trick you can see here. And if you go to Mystery Islands, you'll stand a better chance at getting golden iron from every rock rather than stone. When you start a new island after the 2.0 update, you might have noticed that the Island 101 app is automatically downloaded on your Nook phone. And if you're anything like me, you'll find the tips really annoying. They're not that helpful and I'm not new to Animal Crossing. So here's how you turn them off. 
Just find the app on your Nook phone, press X and turn off the notifications and you'll never have to look at them again. Next up is placing the initial three villager plots. And here's something I didn't know. You can villager hunt for these villagers from the very beginning. All you need to do is place the plots down. You don't even need to make any furniture for them. Grab some Nook Mile tickets and go off on an adventure and find three villagers you want. So as this is the ultimate guide, let's quickly cover what villager hunting is. As long as you have an empty plot, every single Nook Mile ticket island you go to will have a villager. And it's up to you to decide whether you want that villager or not. If you decide you don't want that villager, you can leave the island and go to another one and find another villager. The important thing about villager hunting is you can only go when there's an empty plot. This is two days after the villager asks to leave your island. The empty plot will only remain open for one in-game day. If you don't invite any villagers on that day, the next day the plot will autofill and a random villager will come to your island. So if one day is not enough, you can just time travel. So every time you open the game up, make sure you're on the same day as the open plot date. And that way the plot will never autofill. Also, if you're wondering how people get so many Nook Mile tickets for villager hunts, then the trick is to visit Treasure Islands. You can find loads of them for free on Twitch. One other change to 2.0 is starter homes. One thing that was always said in previous versions of the game is not to keep your initial three villagers from those plots because they won't have their real homes. But if you have the DLC, you can change that now so you don't need to worry about it. If you're trying to kick a villager you hate off your island, there is a few rules you've got to stick by. And this is that the most recent villager on your island will not ask to leave. And you have to wait at least two weeks since the last villager moved to your island before another villager will ask to leave. If you like time traveling, then my tip is to time travel 15 days in advance and almost always someone will ask to leave. If this isn't the villager you want, then time travel back, save the game and go another 15 days forward and keep on repeating until the villager you want gets the bubble. Once you get those three villagers moved in on your island, you'll be able to go to Harv's Island. Harv should be wandering around your island, speak to him and the next day you should be able to fly there. Now his house, whilst can be fun, is not the part we're after. Just speak to him outside his house and inside the house and the next day you should have the best thing unlock. This is the first new feature from the 2.0 update that you'll be able to do in Animal Crossing and it's great. Not only will you be able to unlock new hairstyles, you'll also get a bunch of caravans be able to be unlocked for 100,000 bells each. Yup, it's a bit pricey. However, here's another top tip. If you time travel really far into the future, you might find that a lot of this has already been paid off. I don't know the exact amount per day, but I did notice the further I went through the game, the more that had been paid off for each caravan by, I, I don't even know, villagers, NPCs, someone else. So I'll quickly talk about who they are and then I'll tell you which order to do it in. First, we have Leaf who sells plants, bushes and crops, which you can use for cooking. And they also have a weed removal service. Then there's Savannah who sells rugs, Kix who sells bags and shoes, Reese and Cyrus who can customize items, and Red who sells artwork, both real and fake. Then you have Tortima, who both mentally scars you by looking like this. There he is! I hate him! What's wrong with his face? And can help you access your storage. And finally, you have Katrina, who not only tells your fortune, but can also help you build relationships with your villagers. The cool part about the fortune is that it actually impacts your game. You can see here all the effects of the fortunes. And don't worry if it's a bad fortune, as you can cleanse it with a mere 10,000 bells. Restocks on Harv's Island happen every Monday, so be sure to check in every now and again. The order that you get the caravans doesn't really matter. Tortum is probably the most useless, so leave him for last. And I'd probably say either Reese or Cyrus or Leaf are the most useful, and Red, so get those three first. Now it's time to talk about our favorite museum guy. This is Blathers. If you're more than a few days in, you probably already have him on your island. If you haven't already got Blathers in his tent, then all you need to do is hand five fish or bugs to Tom Nook. To upgrade from the tent to the building, you just need to hand Blathers 15 fossils, bugs and fish in total. If you're trying to get Brewster, then you do need the art gallery as well. To do that, you need to have donated 60 things to Blathers. This can be fossils, bugs, sea creatures and fish. Once you've donated 60 items, the next day Isabel should talk about a suspicious character on your island. That's Red. You're going to want to speak to him. He'll give you a piece of artwork, which you need to then donate to Blathers. And then Blathers will talk about getting the art installation installed. 
If you haven't already got Brewster, that's probably because your island is not three stars yet. So let's talk about island rating. This is super important since the 2.0 update. Nearly every feature in the game is locked behind a three star rating now. And this includes the DLC, even if you've paid for it, which is ludicrous. In order to get an island rating, you need to speak to Isabel. And to get Isabel, you need resident services. Once you've got Blathers and invited the three extra villagers to your island, you should, in the next few days, get asked about resident services upgrade. Once that is done, Isabel will come to your island and you can go over and talk to her and ask about island evaluations. After Isabel gives you the score, she'll then suggest ways to improve the island, such as picking up clutter, planting more trees and flowers, or just decorating more. I cover it more in detail up here, but island rating is all to do with a point system. Points are awarded for things like each villager living on your island, every tree, every plant, all the items that you place, both crafted and uncrafted items, and every bridge and incline, which by the way, since the 2.0 update, you can have more of, give points. Having the Able Sisters as a building and the upgraded museum and upgraded shop also give bonus points. Points are lost for things like having too many weeds on your island, the island being cluttered, and also items being left on the floor, not placed. Also, be sure to have a variety of different fruit trees on your island. That really helps. Three stars is the only rating you need on your island, but you can aspire to be a five star rating. But getting five stars causes a lot of arguments between you and Isabel. As it's all to do with points, it's nothing to do with how beautiful your island is. So despite its beauty, Isabel can still have problems with there being too many items and not enough room to move around. I don't know, but if you do get five stars, you get a beautiful lily of the valleys growing all over your island. Once you finally get three stars, you can go and get terraforming from the Nook Terminal. You can also unlock the DLC and you also get the addition of Cap'n and Brewster. Let's go through them. So we'll start with Cap'n who was added on the 2.0 update. I love him so much. It's 1000 Nook Miles for a ride and you can only go once per day. You can clap along to his songs by pressing A and use the other buttons to react as well. If you want to skip his songs, just spam B. They can get old really fast. You have a 78% chance of getting a normal island and a 22% chance of having a rare island. Normal islands include the basic like Nook Mile Ticket Island, Vegetable Island, Vine and Moss Island is for some reason also a basic island, and also the Gyroid Island, which I've only got once. And that only had like two gyroids on it, so I don't know why it's called that. Then the rare islands with a 22% chance include things like the seasonal islands and the star fragment island. But you can only get the seasonal island if your player has been through that season. AKA, if you got this game for Christmas, you won't see any seasonal islands because you haven't been through any season. Also, Katrina's fortune affects your chances of getting a rare island. So make sure you go to her before you go to your Cap'n Island. If she gives you good luck with belongings, you are guaranteed a rare island. And I haven't got the Star Fragment Island yet, so I'm still trying. Every Cap'n Island will give you a DIY and a gyroid fragment. And all you need to do is plant the gyroid fragment on your own island, water it, it will give off a puff of smoke or steam, and the next day you'll have a fully fledged gyroid. Next up is my boy Brewster, who you can go buy coffee from. I love him so much. In order to unlock Brewster, you not only do you need to have three stars, you need to have the art gallery and donated one piece of everything to the museum. So one fish, one bug, one sea creature, one fossil and one piece of artwork. Once you do this, Blathers will have a thought bubble above his head and that's your cue to go find Brewster on a Cap'n Island. I suggest you visit him once per day. He can have random people coming to visit him. Not only can that be your own villagers, this can also be other NPCs. I've seen Lil Rossetti there so many times. It's so cute. You can also use your amiibo cards to invite other people, including NPCs which aren't actually in New Horizons. Some people you invite have a special guest and oh, it's so cute. Finally, you definitely want to go at least once per day. Some special things happen if you have enough coffees. Brewster will give you items and apparently the final item is really cute and really lovely. And also, you have a chance to get pigeon milk in your drink. Don't look it up too much. Don't look up what pigeon milk is, no. Seriously, 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 seriously. Don't, don't look it up. You've been warned. You've been warned. The DLC is a whole video itself, but when you unlock resident services, you'll have a little cutscene with Lottie and you'll be able to go to work. From then on out, you'll be able to explore the DLC in all its glory. Although the DLC has an end, it doesn't really end. You can do unlimited amount of villagers. You can also go visit villagers' houses you've already done and give them a remodel. There is so much to do. It's kind of like the game itself. It doesn't really have an end point. You kind of make the fun.
Next, we're going to quickly talk about flowers, and this is more about the downsides of flowers, aka whenever you get rain, they will spread. This is particularly problematic if you enjoy time traveling, so here's how to stop them from breeding. Create a custom design that is completely transparent and place them anywhere on your island where you don't want flowers to grow. This way, no matter how many days you leave them, they will never grow where you've put the transparent path down. Next up is my short guide on how to get bells fast. There's a cheating way and a non-cheating way. The cheating way is to just go to a treasure island. You can pick up chunks of gold that you can then sell on your island. If they have hacked turnip prices, then this gives you 999,000 bells straight into your bank account. If you want to get bells fast the good old fashioned way, then here are my top tips. One, if you love the DLC and already have a ton of houses remodeled, you can change your pokey into bells. The conversion rate's pretty good. Number two, invest in stonks or turnips. You can find them every Sunday morning and you get different turnip prices every morning and afternoon. Be sure to harass your friends to find out their prices as they won't be the same as yours. And I feel like almost every week you can make a slight profit from them. And some weeks you can make mad dollar. There's even websites you can go to where you can type in your turnip prices for a week and then it will start predicting them from then on out. It's actually surprisingly accurate. Be sure you sell your turnips by the following Saturday though, or they go rotten. Rotten turnips don't sell for a lot, but they are useful for attracting ants and flies if you need to finish that critopedia. Tip three, get rid of your native fruit trees. You don't need them. They sell for only 100 bells each, whereas non-native fruit sell for 500 bells each. So just fill your island with non-native fruit trees. Next up is golden tools. And honestly, my opinion is they're not worth it. And before you question me, just hear me out golden tools break and there's no way to buy a golden tool so that means you always have to craft them whenever they break so for me personally the easiest option is to just go to nook's cranny and buy whatever tools they have there but if you're really after the golden tools probably for the nook miles let's be honest they're worth an absolute ton of those then here's how to get them to get the golden axe you just need to break 100 axes this includes the flimsy axe so just use a ton of those to get the golden slingshot, you need to shoot down 300 balloons. And after you've done that, you need to look out for a gold colored balloon. Shoot that down and the DIY recipe will be inside the balloon. For the golden watering can, you need to reach a five star town rating and Isabel will give you the DIY after giving you the rating. To get the golden net, you need to have finished the bug critopedia. And for the golden rod, you need to have finished the fish critopedia. And to get the golden shovel, you need to help Gulliver a total of 30 times to get the DIY in the mail. And finally, this is probably the most important thing of all. There is no more major updates coming to Animal Crossing New Horizons. Ever. Up until November, you could kind of bank on Nintendo bringing a new update to revitalize the game. Now we have nothing to save us from when we get burnt out. It's all up to us now to stop that burnout. Since November, there have been a few patches and a few new items added to the game, but that's it. And honestly, that's all I expect going forwards. So I personally say take your time with this game, enjoy it, don't rush, and just have a great time. That being said, play the game however you want. And if you're like me and you like time traveling, because sometimes it just gets a bit too slow, then let me talk about it. Time traveling is super easy to do. You just go to your system settings, click on date and time and change the date and load up the game. It will now think you're in the future or the past, whichever way you went. Time traveling won't corrupt your game data. You can go like decades into the future and still be fine. It will mess up your turnips though. If you time travel forwards, the turnips will spoil before the following Saturday, so make sure you don't go past then. If you time travel backwards, however, no matter how short a time you travel backwards, they will instantly spoil. So if you want to be a time traveler, maybe don't invest in stonk. The most important part just have fun. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel and also check out my Twitch where I stream nothing but Animal Crossing on there too. And if you're a veteran and you have other tips and tricks, leave them down below. As always, I'll see you next time. Bye.